but I had to see the best this planet had to offer. I am not impressed. Oh, hey guys, I was watching uh, Justice League. You know, why is it that in the episode with the Justice Lords, Doomsday acts as if he's ever seen Superman before, and yet later on in JLU, we found out that Doomsday was psychologically trained to want to kill Superman. I mean, did the writers just not do their homework on previous episodes? You know, speaking of clumsy retcons, I don't remember my uh, review of uh, Bionicle 2 Legend of Metro Nui. Sure you do. After the Toa managed to escape from the clutches of the Makuta, they took all the Matoran into the safety of a deserted island, sacrificed their powers to release them from their slumber, and turned themselves into the Dominion of Tarago. And that's where the movie picks up, right? Wrong. See, how is Vakama is supposed to be our storyteller in all these? I can't help but think the conversation must have gone like this. And so we sacrificed our powers and woke up all of the Matoran, and the rest is history. For that is the way of the Bionicle. But I thought there were only six of you. Wait, what? Well, how could the six of you manage to carry every single Matoran all the way to Matanui if your boat was destroyed? Yeah, there are an awful lot of plot holes in your story, and I don't need to be particularly wise to see that. Also, if you trapped the Makuta in Protodermis, who is that that I fought in the first movie? Because I thought that he was the same Makuta you fought long ago. Oh, oh, right, right, I, I forgot. Sorry, those bits must have slipped my mind. It must be the robot Alzheimer's. All right, after we beat the Makuta, but before we lost our power, we used the- But now that we know you're air-breathing, isn't that a little story spoiler in? Look, do you want to hear the f***ing story or not? That's better. Now, this is the story of... Uh... Uh... What was I saying again? Yeah, I think I'll cut in here, folks. This is Bionicle 3, Web of Shadows. So yeah, retcon time! This movie clumsily places itself right at the end of the climax of the second movie, meaning that, for the sake of cohesion, we need to pretend that the last eight minutes of legend haven't happened yet. So, let's see if we can get ourselves unstuck from the Web of Shadows. So, after the opening narration that thankfully doesn't rehash the story of the arrival of the Makuta on Matanui, we instead get narration that rehashes the events of the last movie! In the time before time, six mighty Toa vanquish the Makuta, encasing him in protodermis, held tight by the force of their combined elemental powers. Wait, is that was protodermis he was frozen in? What sense does that make? Whatever, more on Protodermis later. Right now, I just want to see if some of my questions from earlier get answered. So we cut to our heroes, the Toa Metru, as they pick themselves up after a messy crash landing on the shores of Metru Nui, sometime after the second movie. Well, that's done. <laughs> it would appear there was an error in our transport. Pilot error. Hey! I was only order taken. The comma was the one order given. No need to be critical, Matau. Regardless of how gracefully we made it here. Whatever. Uh, hey, could uh, somebody dig me up? There you go. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's what I do. Are we gonna stand around all night? Or are we going to rescue the Matoran? It appears that, after the exodus, with no one to watch over things, the various beasts held within the Metronomy Archives have escaped and taken over the city. What did you have in there? Everything. Most of it dangerous. Rahi? The Onu Metro Archive houses a specimen of every Rahi beast ever discovered. At least, <laughs> it used to. And the webs? Viserac. Nasty creatures. Coming from you? Huh. That's not good. Still, Vakama is putting on a brave face and trying to be an inspirational leader. Thankfully, a stark contrast from how he was in the last movie. How could this happen to me? Now his constant brooding is replaced with unwarranted optimism. We go to the Colosseum, we rescue the Matoran, we leave. <sighs> or get pulverized. It is a possibility. We faced the Makuta and won. I really doubt a few crusty relics are gonna give us much trouble. What? Can't move. Can't stop. This is gonna hurt. Great. Our movie's barely begun, and our heroes have already established to be easily ambushed morons. Okay. Yeah, we're right behind.
behind you, fearless leader. Literally. Bickering won't get us out of this, Mato. No, but think talking before charging straight into a trap might have. If you have something to say, Mato, say it. You take it easy, let's just figure out a way to get out of this thing. So our heroes are captured by the deadly Viserac, who are... Spiders! A giant legion of spiders! And taken to the Metronui Coliseum, where the Viserac have gathered the sleeping Matoran. Man, nothing good happens for the Toa here, ever. First, they get beaten up by the floor, then they're branded as criminals, then they were to let save the Matoran from being put into capsules, and now they're being held captive in giant green bean pods by a legion of spiders! Anyway, at the Coliseum we meet our big bad, the king of the Viserac, Sidorak. By the way, very subtle with the devil horns. Upon hearing about the Toe and his captivity, he decides to go the elegant route of dropping them to their deaths from a tall tower. However, Sidorak's snake-like fiancé, Rudaka, is of the opinion that their punishment must be more severe. You have something to say? Only that leaders are judged in time by the quality of their enemies. History teaches us this. The Toa? A fantastic adversary, my king. Worthy of your rule, and therefore a demise that will be remembered and spoken about for all time. I suppose I could allow the situation to become a little more... Legendary. Or you could just kill them and say you managed to kill the people who defeated the Makuta, the spirit of darkness and chaos. I mean, what more do you want? So as Matau continues blaming Vakama for leading them into a trap, the Fire Toa slips back into his old routine of self-blame. <sighs> I tried to lead you as best I could. I wish I was better at it. But if I've learned one thing from all we've been through, I am what I am. And no matter how much I might want to, I can't just change. Watch it! Hey, hey! Hey! He was just talking about how he couldn't change. Now he's changing into a horrible creature. It's like radiant. On your way and day. So as they're changing into their new shapes, their pods explode and they begin to fall. But they're saved by some mysterious glowing beings. As they make their escape, we cut to Radaka as she speaks to a fragment of the protodermis that encases Makuta, showing she's in cahoots with him and is planning to release him from his captivity. Eventually, the Toa wake up at a new location that vaguely looks like some Chozo ruins. They regroup and are understandably unhappy with their new looks. It's all right, Matao! Nakama? Matao, it's all right. All right? You called this all right? We're all here. We'll find a way, together. Cause that's what friends do. He is Absolutely. right. As Nokama tries to keep some order, Matau can't help but throw some abuse at Vakama. Though I'm sure nothing bad will come of it, he's only been riding the guy the entire movie. Back with Rudaka, she's just pleased to learn that the Toa are still alive because... Wait, I, th I thought you didn't want them to... But, wait a minute! Even now, their broken bodies are being brought to me. So I may drain them of their elemental powers. Powers I will use to shatter the wretched seal that keeps us apart. If all you need is the energy from their bodies, why did you tell Sidorak to keep them alive? What do you want, lady? Whatever. The point is, she's not happy to find out that they escaped, thanks to... Kuralaga? What? Kuralaga? Poor Haka? Kuralaga? More Maka? Ralaka? What are you saying? Subtitles on! Ralaka? Oh. What the hell's that? Actually, these are the Rahaga. They're... I guess they're wise men, kind of like the Taraga, though where exactly they come from is never really elaborated upon. Just that they know what their problem is, that the Toa have been poisoned with Hordika venom, turning them into Toa Hordika, and that their only hope is to find a wise creature called the Kitangu who can cure them. However... If it is not neutralized, it will take root. And Hordika you will be forever. Forever! 
Vakama, however, is of the opinion that they need to go save the Matoran, regardless of the condition they happen to be in. Norik, the leader of the Rahaga, wisely points out that they don't even know how to use their Hordika powers and couldn't even get past the Visorak in their current state. Vakama, full of rage, heads off on his own. But suddenly! Robo Bear! Again! Wait, I've done this already. Anyway, out of reflex, Vakama activates his giant flip top on his back and scares the Robo Bear away. Quint Norik, it's a weapon of some kind. I'll be sure to learn how to make good use of it, wise one. And what about your friends? Former friends. <laughs> they think being a leader is so easy, they can try it themselves. Fair enough. I mean, Nokama seems to be doing a pretty good job being the leader. Why don't you let her lead for a while? Oh wait, she can't lead? Of course not! She's not red! Despite Nora giving him the usual spiel about unity, duty, and destiny, Vakama decides to strike out on his own. The others head off as well, getting their quest underway. As Vakama is on his own, he assures himself he can do just fine right on his own. Right before he gets attacked by a company of Viserac and captured even quicker than the first time they were captured. So far, the score is 2-0 in favor of the Viserac. They take their captured Toho Hordika back to the Colosseum, where Radak is meeting him in private with a proposition for him. Timing! She takes him outside, showing that Sidorak has no idea Vakama is there. <laughs> Some leader. Precisely. You're not worried they're going to tell him you said that? They are loyal to me. Right. Like you are to Sidorak? Yes. They obey me because I am strong. They fear me, and therefore do not dare to question my authority. That is leadership, Vakama. That is how the other Toa should treat you. Maybe then they would give you the respect you deserve. That's how it works around here, Vakama. The weak submit to the strong, and the strong get executive parking places. Executive parking places. Rudaka offers Vakama the standard promises of lordship over his former home of Tometru and command of the Viserac Horde in exchange for his fealty. He's not sure, so Rudaka arranges a little demonstration for him. Throw yourselves off the edge. My god, what a tall building! Obedience. This is but the first of many lessons I can teach you. Think about the things I could show you. The doors I could open for you. You, Danny Phantom, and I. Vlad Plasmus. Together, we could rule. What? Do you think I was gonna do Darth Vader on Cloud City? How much of a hack do you think I am? As Vakama's seduction to the dark side nears completion, the other Toa and the Rahaga manage to get to a sacred temple where they hope to find information on Kitangu. The Toa don't want to go inside, feeling their hideous Hordika selves would desecrate the temple, so they stay in guard, while the Rahaga go inside to explore. But inside, as the Rahaga explore the temple looking for directions to the mystical Kitangu, they get attacked by Vakama, who somehow snuck past the Toa, who were on guard on the only bridge to the temple, and raises the temple. Turns out, the only one left behind was Norik to leave a message. Vakama would never do such a thing. Right? Uh, you are correct, Nokama. The Vakama you know would not. He's changed. Just as you all will, if we do not find Kitongu. I fear Vakama has given himself completely to the beast that lurks within us all. The ancient, the primal. The parts of ourselves we like to think progress has made us forget. Fordika is its name. I don't think I want to be Hordika. Huh, I could have sworn it was called the Hulk. So as it turns out, Vakama leaving Nork behind was a remarkably stupid move, because before Vakama arrived, they were able to translate enough of the ancient writings to know where they need to go next. Whereas if Vakama had taken all the Rahaga, the Toby pretty much up <laughs> creek without a paddle. turned into great mountains of frozen protodermis. Wait! Frozen protodermis? That looks like snow to me! 
it is a proton is the equivalent of water? Well, that, that can't be because there's clearly an equivalent to water already. What is the logic here? What is the internal logic of Protodermis? I know I called it plot fuel in an earlier video, but there's no real clarification as to if there are different types of Protodermis or not. Protodermis gets under my skin because it just does. What do the writers need it to? Need to digivolve the good guys? Protodermis. Need to entrap the bad guys? Protodermis. Need a good car insurance? Protodermis. Need to make a four course French style dinner that's also kosher? Protodermis. Ugh. Sorry, I caught in my ranting and I almost missed the plot. So, back with the villains, Rudaka presents Vakama as a gift to Sidorak as commander of his Viserac Horde. He's unimpressed. Rudaka or not, there's only one of him. Which is why the other Toa are on their way here. With Vakama leading your horde, they will be captured and trained just like him. Will all six be enough to please you? Hmm. A fine offer, Rudaka. Excellent! Now I can finally collect the whole set! Consider it an engagement gift. Well, why didn't you say so? Check it out for Kama. I'm totally going to tap that. Well then. <laughs> Allow me to introduce you to the Horde. <sighs> And so, Sidorak gives control of the Viserac Horde to Vakama. And so, the Toa find Kitangu hidden inside a mountain and ask him for help. Nork translates for them that the key to saving the day is for them to utilize the Hordika powers rather than be rid of them. I forgot a lot. Why does he talk like that? You guys hired Scott McNeil for this part. Have him say something. You know, anything. Like... Eh, we're all gonna die. Or... Can you guys just have him say something, please? No. I hate you. Regardless, they manage to recruit Kitangu into their group and head off to the final battle. Turns out that their masterful battle plan is to blast their way into Metro Nui and start blasting things. As far as I'm concerned, this is a good plan, simply because things are happening. Side note, I found it interesting that in the movie itself, the little backpack launchers shoot giant orange blasts of energy, whereas the actual toys just shoot plastic discs. But when the Toa refused to kneel before Vakama, he unleashes a legion of spiders on them. While observing the battle, the evil trio known as Kitangu climbing the side of the tower towards them. Vakama offers to get rid of him, but Rudaka challenges the size of Sidorak's penis, so he has to go kill it himself. Um, if Kitangu wasn't a myth before, he soon will be. Sidorak and Rudaka head off to fight Kitangu and leave Vakama behind, right as Matau shows up to fight him. With Sidorak and Rudaka, the king of Viserak proves that not only is he easily manipulable, he's also a terrible shot. Rudaka proves that killing the giant, powerful, mystical, Raiden hat-wearing ancient is sometimes a woman's job. Well, that's that. Back with Vakama and Matau, they have... a real fight! No using vague powers of the elements or anything, but a pretty legit fight. Choreography's pretty good, too. Meanwhile, it turns out that Kitangu survived his fall. The final blow is yours, Rudaka. Where are you going? Finish him. You do it. But I can't defeat him myself! I know. Rudaka? <laughs> no, no! Betrayal! Damn, one of those bitches is cold as ice, and it isn't the red one. Taking advantage of the chaos, Norik uses this opportunity to free the other Rahaga from their captivity so they can join the fight. You are weak, brother. Uh, 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 you're right, Bakama. I am weak. So, that 
at the end you see the truth. Only now, at the end, do you understand? We all make mistakes, Fakama. That's what happens when you're brave enough to make decisions. I understand that now. Him. He's running your ass for half the movie. Drop your loser teammate and go shack up with the evil Snake Queen. I'm sorry for doubting you. Our strength comes from our unity, Bakama. Drop him. Which means you can't be strong without us. Do it! I'm better and stronger alone. I don't believe that. Do it. And I don't think you do either. You're our leader, Bakama. You're my leader. We've got a job to do. A, a duty. Still you went. Of course, he doesn't listen to my bad influence and returns to the light side, back to his normal self. But he's too late to stop Matthew from falling, but not too late to bungee jump off the tower like a badass and save his friend. Hang on. I've got a plan. Back with the Toe who are still fighting for their lives. I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed they managed to last this long. But I have to question how, since they're surrounded on all sides and the Toe have no cover from the green laser bolts, the Viserac are randomly shooting in every direction. Because shut up. So the Toe get completely surrounded, with the Viserac having them dead to rights, where Nudaka shows up astride her giant golden spider. You have something I want. Your elemental powers. Earth. Stone. Ice. Water. Fire already belongs to me. Captain Bladder! Wait. One's missing. That would be air! It's all yours, my queen. Thank you, Vakama. Ah, I see where this is going. Now. About those powers. You want them so bad? Take them! <laughs> well, that did nothing. Fools! You, like your powers, are nothing if you are not united! And as Vakama stands with me. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about that. You might defeat me, Vakama, but not all of them. Strike me down and they will surely destroy you and your friends. Think about it. I have. And seeing as you convinced Sidorak to put me in charge of them. Get out of here! All of you! You're free! <laughs> that's an order. Huh, that's actually kind of a good plan. And since this was the lady who earlier displayed no apparent regard for their lives, the Viserac don't even flinch at abandoning her snaky ass to the Toa. Traitors! You can't betray someone you're enslaved to. So, after reciting the moral of the movie about leadership and tyranny, Vakama decides it's time to finish her Daka off once and for all. Unfortunately, it turns out she was faking them out and was channeling their elemental blasts through the crystal in her chest back to the trap Makuta. And when Vakama hit her with the fire blast, she got all the elements she needed to spring him from his protodermacy prison. Oops. Um, so what happened to her? Ugh, screw it. Look, we don't see her in any of the other movies, so as far as I'm concerned, she's dead. Yay! So now that they've all gotten back together and renewed their destinies or whatever, Kitanga changes them back into their old selves, and they begin the long process of moving all the Matoran back onto dome ship things for the long trip back to the island of Matanui. Now, I know the movie is almost over, but there's one more thing I have to ask. Why are they doing this? 
No, really, why are they moving all the Matoran? Sidorak and Rodaka are dead, the Makuta is elsewhere, the Viserak are scattered, and if they were dead, they could probably contain all the loose Rahi, given some time. So, why are they relocating all the Matoran from their homes, lives, and jobs to a deserted island to rebuild their society? And without any consent from the Matoran? How would you feel if you were rescued by a firefighter from a blazing inferno, and then the firefighters decided you needed to be deported to a different country? It makes no goddamn sense! So, they see the place where the Makuta used to be and are understandably unhappy. The Makuta? He is gone. Not for long. I imagine we'll be seeing him again very soon. And when we do? We'll find a way to defeat him. Because that's what Toa do. Well, not a specific Toa. By that point, we'll be old and weak and have to rely on the new Toa to come and defeat the Makuta. And so, we come full circle back to Turaga Vakama, giving us the closing speech. I was right. Makuto would follow us here, and threaten to cast our new world and all who came to call it home into everlasting shadow. It was in those days I discovered our destinies are not written in stone. We have to find them for ourselves. I found mine. Now it's time for you to make new legends. For that is the way of the Bionicle. Well, that did answer some of my questions. We now know how the Makuta got onto the island, and we now know how everyone else got onto the island. But there's still a few things that are left unanswered. For example, at the end of the first movie, they were talking about finding Metro Nui. Why do they need to find it if they're from there? What happened to the ships they used to get to Mata Nui? Why haven't we seen them before? Wouldn't they be treated as holy relics, the instruments of their liberation? Why didn't the Matoran or Turaga ever mention any of this being from a city stuff before now? Why did they wait until now to try to go back? What was stopping them from fleeing the island when the Borok showed up, or any of the other threats? Look, there's still one more movie to go, and there's one more chance for all these questions to get answered and all of this to make sense. Let's see if this legend gets any better after it's been reborn. Anyway, at the Coliseum, we meet our big bad, the King of the Visorak. I didn't do that! Yes, you did! I didn't do that! It's your iPad! <laughs> Sorry. Cut! Oh. You broke my flow. Cut. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. What are you doing fucking around with your buttons then? <laughs> I was waiting for a perfect time to use it, and that, and my hand slipped. I see. So, it's not that you didn't mean to fuck it up, <laughs> it's that you wanted to fuck it up at a more opportune time. Yes! I'm so glad that I have such good friends who care so much about my filmmaking aspirations that they would not try to sabotage my movies. <laughs> they should have pouring seawater on my laptop to wreck all my video files. <laughs> well, I haven't done that yet, but... It's, it's in the works. Yes. It's just getting enough seawater, it's the question. I just need to wait for uh, Eli to get back from the ocean. <laughs> That's when the handoff occurs? Yes. <laughs> Alright. Oh, uh, will play.